Hello again, this is Ken Turner in Milford, Ohio, and I'd just like to start today with uh, the Word of God, and we're going to jump right into this second uh, session, lesson, whatever you want to call it, and we're talking about uh, John chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 14, and let's just jump in here. John 1 and 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, the Shekin, the divine prep. Let me read something here. Let me let me read something here. I got it. I have a Jewish Bible here, and I just want to read this. I want to read this verse in this this Jewish Bible. It's actually interesting to me. Okay, so I'm going to read John 1 and 14 in this Jewish Bible. It says, "The Word became a human being and lived with us." We saw his Shekinah eye and the Shekinah of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. He, he, they use the word she, Shekinah glory, basically, of God here, that the glory of God. And this is what I want to talk about right now here. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, his Shekinah glory, his Shekinah as of the only, his glory as of the only son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, hallelujah, the truth of God's word, the grace that came through Christ, the grace that came through Christ. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We saw his glory, we saw his Shekinah, the Shekinah of the Father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word Shekinah is the divine presence of God that's descended to dwell among humanity, the heavenly uh, Mishka is a Hebrew word for tabernacles mentioned in the New Testament. In Revelations 15 and 5, after these things I look in the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was opened. That tabernacle, he talks about the divine presence of God that descended here. It descended. Okay, so he became flesh and dwelt among us. God. He sent his son that he may come and present himself to us and shine the light of the glorious gospel. And this isn't a flashlight. This isn't the sun and moon and stars. This is the very light of God that brings life. If you go back to Genesis, I keep talking about this light. I can't get away from it. It says, and he spoke light into existence. He said, and there was light and light came. That was even before the sun, the stars, and the moons. Look at that verse. It's it's this, I think it's the second or third verse there in Genesis 1, 1, in Genesis chapter 1 there. And it says, in, in 1 Timothy 6, 16, it actually uses the term, he who dwells in the unapproachable light. And and, and I don't want to get into all that because, because uh, we could talk about the Old Testament and how it was back then, but who dwells in the unapproachable light. God dwells in the light and he created the light for man. He created the light for the earth that life may come about and we may come alive. And the thing I want to talk about here, the word became flesh, dwelt among us. We saw his glory, the glory of the father's only son, full of grace and truth. We saw, we see, we can experience the divine presence of God because Jesus Christ to re came to reveal himself and he came to reveal the Father to us that we may be experience this relationship with God. And I go back to this a lot. I do, I do, I do, but I have to keep hammering away at this thing. This thing is so intertwined, so intertwined, so intertwined and so close. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, they're all three, but they're also so intertwined. They're in oneness and unity, oneness and unity. In John 14, 6 and 7, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Why? Why can only, only, no one can come through the Father except through me? Because Jesus Christ is the only one that came and put on flesh 
put on humanity so that he could show us and he could reveal to us God in the flesh so that we could see that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. In, in, in this here, he says, if you had known me, you have known the Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. He was telling the disciples here. He was telling the group of people here. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? Because Jesus also was the light. He was the light that came into the world. God was, he was there in the beginning and he was there before time began. He was that great and precious light. Exodus 3, 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And here he says, God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Now we, we look at that and say, I am who I am. He, he is. I am who I am. I am he who exists. I am the eternal one who passes not away. I was here before the world was created. I will be here after the world is burned up and gone. He was here during the flood. He was here during creation. He was here in the garden. He walked with man. He says, he who spake and the world was, he who spake and all things, things existed. That's the power. That's the ultimate authority of God. God is who he is. It's, we can't, it's, our mortal mind cannot grasp the power of it, but God sent his son that he would put on flesh so that he would show us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the father except through me. You know, my son lives in Scotland. He mentioned this the other day and it really struck me. A lot of times when he's talking over there, uh, especially to the Islamic community, he calls God Elohim. He calls God Adonai. He calls God Jehovah because they cannot, they, their God is not the same as our God. It is not the same as our God. Our God is eternal. He always was. He created all things. And as the original words literally signify, I will be what I will be. In other words, God, don't worry about what I am. I am more than enough. I am there. I've always been there. And it doesn't matter what people think about God. God is who he is. We can bash God. We can say God is dead. We can say all these things we want to about God, but God still sits on his throne. God is still in control and he is still the great I am, the eternal one that never passes away. Nothing can express his nature. Therefore, no name can be attributed to him. Okay. In verse 15 here, I want to read these few little notes I have here. This is my name forever. The name here referred to is that which immediately precedes Jehovah Elohim, which is translated the Lord God, the name by which God had been known for from the creation of the world. And the name by which he is known among the same people to this present day. Even the heathens, if you study the Old Testament, even the heathens knew this name of the true God. And hence, out of our Jehovah, they formed words that would actually, and, and it says, so that the world has been literally fulfilled. The word has been literally fulfilled. This is my memorial unto all generations. I, I, God, will be there. I am the existent one. This, verse 15, he says, this is my name forever, and thus I will be remembered throughout all generations. God is not going away. 
People cannot believe in him, but God is not going away. God was here before us. He's bigger than us. He's stronger than us. He is the great I am. There's nothing here that wasn't created by him. Oh, hallelujah. John 17, one through five, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted his eyes to heaven and his father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And I want, to, I want you to get this verse three, John 17, three, and this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Eternal life is not living forever. And I think I've said this on one of my other videos. Eternal life is not just living forever. Eternal life is being in a place where we know God that we have a relationship with God. Because I can tell you right now, there's been times in my life that I was so sick. There was a time in my life that I was so depressed. I didn't care whether I lived or died. And I can tell you right now, I don't want to relive those times in my life. I don't. Okay. So eternal life, if you were trapped in that situation where you were so sick or you were so depressed or you were so bound by drugs and addictions, that you were miserable, you wouldn't want to live forever. You wouldn't want to live forever. This is not eternal life, is not just living forever. We think from a man's standpoint or a woman's standpoint, humanity's standpoint, well, I want to live longer. Maybe I can live to be 100. You know, my mother's 91, and I keep kidding her. She's going to live to be 120. But that's not what it's about. It's not about eternally living on this earth. It's about having this true relationship with God through Jesus. Jesus Christ, that he was God and he put on humanity, he put on humanity, that he may reveal himself to us. I glorified you on earth, he says in verse 4 of 17, have accomplished the work that you have given me to do, and now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. That word know there, when we look at that, that they may know you. That comes a word, it's it's a Greek word, data, and it's the it's the same as the Hebrew word yada, the most intimate experience of the object of knowledge, intercourse, union, and oneness. That is the same verse. That is the same word that he's sharing here. To know, to know, to know. Hallelujah. And we're going to stop right there. God bless you. I hope you've enjoyed this. We're going to jump back into this the next session. And hopefully you'll just stay with me. Stay tuned and may God speak to you. Don't forget, if you enjoy what you're hearing, please, please uh, click like. And also uh, join the channel and uh, like it. Thank you.